good morning to all we will discuss a uh, few points regarding the radicular cyst everybody know about the radicular cyst its clinical picture uh, location uh, those findings and all we will see something about the pathogenesis and microscopic finding because this is uh, somewhat uh, important one so we will discuss these points today before going into radicular cyst uh, we will see few things about the components of the cyst the word cyst is derived from the greek word uh, meaning sac bladder pouch or back what are the main components parts of the cyst microscopically when you see a cyst it will have a central lumen or the cavity. So cavity is the basic part of a cyst. In a true cyst, the cavity will be lined by an epithelium. The epithelium will be surrounded by a connective tissue wall. So the main parts are lumen surrounded by epithelial lining and connective tissue wall. So this is the component of a true cyst. Okay. When you say false cyst means it lacks the epithelial lining. Likewise, a cyst can occur inside the bone and outside the bone. Inside the bone, it is an intraosseous cyst. Outside the bone, extraosseous. Likewise, a cyst can arise from uh, epithelium. The source of epithelium is orontogenic, means it is called as a orontogenic cyst. If the source of epithelium is non orontogenic, means it is a non orontogenic cyst. Likewise, an inflammation can trigger a cyst then it is called as an inflammatory cyst or sometimes the cyst may be of unknown etiology that is the causative factor will not be known that time it is called as a developmental cyst now when you see the statistical analysis this of course this uh, present slide shows the study done in the south indian population but wherever the study is done uh, among the population uh, radicular cyst top the list usually because it's the most common cyst all of you know that radicular cyst is common in the maxillary anterior region that is maxillary central incisors most commonly lead to radicular cyst because of trauma so anterior teeth are more prone for trauma of course, uh, dental caries also can lead to, left untreated can lead to radicular cyst. But most common etiological factor for the uh, radicular cyst is trauma. So, since anterior teeth are most prone for trauma, the trauma can lead to non vital of the teeth. So, which in turn may give rise to the radicular cyst. So, this radicular cyst is more common in the anterior part of the jaw, maxillary anterior teeth. That is most commonly involved. Uh, any gender can be aff affected any age, uh, but most commonly common in the males. Uh, once the tooth suffers any injury, trauma or decay, uh, it leads to uh, death of the pulp tissue, the materials, necrotic materials from the pulp tissue can reach the periapical region. This necrotic debris uh, triggers an inflammatory process in the periapical region. This inflammation in turn causes this cyst. So, radicular cyst comes under the category of inflammatory cyst. Second thing is, it arises from the odontogenic epithelium, cell rest of malasses. That is nothing but the remnant of the root sheath. Since inflammation causing the cyst and the cyst arises from the odontogenic epithelium, it comes under the category of inflammatory odontogenic cyst. Now, uh, when you see uh, radicular cyst is most common in the permanent teeth only when compared to the deciduous teeth. What are the reasons? Radicular cyst, of course, may occur in the primary teeth also. Uh, but in case of primary teeth, 
most of the time uh, it is what happens means steps are not taken to save the teeth any abnormality any pain occurs in the in relation to the deciduous teeth usually it will be removed once you remove the deciduous teeth if there is any periapical cyst or radicular cyst usually it will resolves so it goes unnoticed and sometimes the radicular cyst in the deciduous condition is sim not symptomatic so it also goes unnoticed then apart from that any inflammation in the periapical region of the radicular cyst any periapical inflammation in the relation to the deciduous teeth usually resolves on its own uh, because of the structure of the bone the inflammation will go off very easily so it may get resolved also or may get unnoticed also goes so because of the above said reasons the radicular cyst are somewhat less common in the deciduous dentition now before going into uh, radicular cyst once the pulp is died um, it may be due to injury or dental caries then it is that particular tooth is called as a non vital tooth the inflammation or infection in the pulp tissue reaches the periapical region once this necrotic material or infection from the pulp tissue infection means that infection may be due to dental caries these infection in the pulp tissue or necrotic debris necrosis of the pulp can occur uh, due to infection due to decay or due to trauma also so necrotic debris or infection from the dead pulp tissue once reaches the periapical region it triggers a inflammatory process in the periapical region this inflammatory process initially will be acute that time patient will have pain or sometimes abscess formation swelling also can come when it is not treated the infection goes for the chronicity so there will be a persistent inflammation this inflammatory uh, reaction in the periapical region leads to the formation of a chronically inflamed mass of tissue in the periapical region that is called as a periapical granuloma so it is in response to the inflammation or infection from the necrotic pulp tissue so this periapical granuloma is a combination of collagen fibers fibroblast more number of blood vessels endothelial cells chronic inflammatory cells lymphocytes plasma cells all these things collectively will be seen as a ball of tissue which is attached to the periapical part of the tooth so periapical granuloma is a chronic condition usually asymptomatic it is seen in relation to the apex of the tooth when time goes on what will happen the present picture shows the periapical granuloma and the periapical granuloma usually consists of uh, lymphocytes and plasma cells plasma cells if more means is called as a immune granuloma less means non immune granuloma usually plasma cell will secrete some immunoglobulin molecules that is seen outside the plasma cell they are called as a russell bodies or pyronin bodies when time goes on this chronic inflammation what will do means will trigger the cell rest of malaces in the periapical region to undergo proliferation so you can see in this picture a uh, root apex is seen in the root apex we are seeing a mass of tissue attached this mass of tissue is the chronically inflamed mass of tissue otherwise called as a granulation tissue in this environment we can see some neutrophils lymphocytes we can see some antibodies also secreted by the uh, plasma cells you can see igg ig and complement component in addition we can see in the center of the granuloma a cell rest of malaces is also present apart from this in this particular environment periapical granuloma 
there will be a, a less amount of uh, that pH will be less so acidic environment it will be oxygen will be less carbon dioxide will be more so in this environment acidic environment oxygen is less carbon dioxide is more I have drawn a flow chart you can see the dead, dead pulp which consists of the bacteria bacteria reaches the periapical region once the bacteria reaches the periapical region antigen antibody reaction will goes on antigen is the bacteria or its product antibody will be produced against it in this process complement component C3 also will join all this inflammatory reaction will causes increased vascular permeability that is vasodilatation will occur increased blood flow will occur this will increases the WBC count in that particular environment so T4 cells, helper cells and B cells both will come into the picture B cell will secrete the antibody T4 cell will secrete certain materials called as lymphokine these materials secreted by the T4 cells make the cell risk of malices to proliferate so thereby inflammation from the pulp tissue reaches the periapical region and makes the epithelium in the periapical region what epithelium means cell rest of malices it is nothing but the remnant of the root sheet normally present in the periodontal ligament this will be triggered by the chemicals secreted by the lymphocytes so the cell rest of malices begin to proliferate so now pathogenesis that is pathogenesis means how a lesion occurs from which tissue it occurs etiology means causative factor here the etiology is the uh, inflammation inflammation is due to bacterial products or necrotic pulp tissue they go to the periapical region causes the inflammatory reaction so this is the etiology etiology is the dental caries or some trauma causing the pulpal death so necrotic tissue bacterial material is the etiological factor how this etiological agent causes the cyst that is the pathogenesis so the inflammation in the periapical region makes the uh, epithelium that is cell rest of malices to proliferate so as the cells um, proliferate what will happen when the island or that aggregate of epithelial cells multiplies it enlarges so in this process what happened earlier it was a small group of cell after multiplication it becomes a larger group of cell so what happens means some of the cells in the center portion of the epithelium may not get the nutrition because it's a expanding mass expanding mass so what happens means blood supply from the surrounding connective tissue may not be able to reach the center of the cells so what happens means some of the epithelial cells present in the center will undergo necrosis now this when the central cells undergo necrosis the central part of the that epithelial island will becomes the cystic lumen that will that only this picture is saying so when you see from the left side okay that is the initial uh, expanding island once that island begins to expand the cells present in the center of the island may be devoid of nutrition so the cells present in the center of the islands will undergo necrosis by proteolytic action okay this central cells when undergo necrosis the central part of that particular cell rest of malices will be devoid of cell and creates a cavity so thereby the cyst forms so when the central cells die the cavity is formed automatically the surrounding peripheral cells will become the epithelial lining you can see it in the second diagram so when time goes on the plasma proteins from the surrounding connective tissue go into the uh, lumen by penetrating to the epithelium then the lumen will also consist of the necrotic epithelial cells some immunoglobulins from the surrounding connective tissue go into the cystic lumen so when plasma proteins and immunoglobulins penetrate the epithelium reaches the center of the 
cavity what happens means the osmotic pressure inside the lumen will be more because of protein content whereas outside the osmotic pressure will be less so what happens means to equalize the pressure on either side of the epithelium this central portion will absorb some water from the periphery so water will enter the lumen till the pressure inside and outside the epithelium are nullified thereby the cyst expands so initially central part of the island will undergo necrosis creating a lumen the peripheral cells will automatically become the lining once this is created the surrounding connective tissue contributes proteins they will enter the lumen once they enter the lumen osmotic pressure inside the lumen increases to equalize the osmotic pressure from inside and outside that inside lumen will attract water from the connective tissue outside water enter the lumen as long as the osmotic pressure inside and outside are nullified thereby the cyst expands as the cyst expands it needs space inside the bone because this uh, radicular cyst occurs inside the bone at the apex of the root so prostaglandins present in the surrounding connective tissue the prostaglandins are secreted by the lymphocytes fibroblasts and endothelial cells that is pg normally we call it as a short form pg prostaglandins will resorb bone create a space and for the expansion of the cyst so thereby the cyst expands okay initially the island that is the cellulose of malasses expands by inflammation central portion undergo necrosis forms the cystic cavity then the cyst expands with the help of the osmotic pressure so this is the pathogenesis pathogenesis means from which tissue it arises cellulose of malasses how it arises that is the pathogenesis so from which tissue it arises how it arises this is called as the pathogenesis etiology is the causative factor now we will move on to the microscopy now some factor has triggered the cyst cyst is formed so microscopically how this radicular cyst will be so three diagrams are there you can see starting from the first you can see a microscopically it consists of a epithelial lining and connective tissue wall when you see the epithelial lining it is made up of non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium there won't be keratin layer normally now this non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium usually will be hyperplastic that is increase in the thickness due to inflammation inflammation causes the cyst lining epithelium to proliferate inflammation can destroy the epithelium also but in this condition it is uh, making the epithelium to multiply so we can see a hyperplastic stratified squamous epithelium which is non keratinized below we can see the connective tissue the connective tissue is made up of uh, lot of inflammatory cells mostly lymphocytes blood vessels collagen fibers and fibroblast so this is the normal microscopic finding when you come to the second picture middle picture you can see that epithelium in the middle has got some hair pin like linear uh, eosinophilic bodies okay here of course i have drawn in a red color this hair pin shaped linear bodies present inside the epithelium is called as the rushton bodies or hyaline bodies uh, these are all thought to derive from blood initially now they are saying this rushton bodies are the secretion of the epithelium itself okay so this can be seen in the epithelium of the inflammatory when this periapical cyst so radicular cyst periapical cyst apical periodontal cyst all are same now when you come to the third diagram you can see the epithelium which is more hyperplastic in this process when the epithelium grows they will entrap the connective tissue within the epithelium so we can see a rings of connective tissue within the epithelium such a pattern is called as the arcading epithelium or arcading pattern arcade means ring so when the epithelium rapidly proliferates it extends in multiple direction in this process they will enclose the connective tissue so this enclosed connective tissue microscopically will seen as a 
rings rings of connective tissue present within the epithelium so this pattern is called as the arcading pattern of the epithelium so this is the microscopic finding we'll continue now apart from this so epithelium is uh, hyperplastic shows uh, uh, cholesterol clefts sorry shows hyaline or western bodies uh, in addition the epithelium shows arcading pattern when you come to the connective tissue it is highly inflamed shows collagen fibers uh, lymphocytes fibroblasts and uh, numerous blood vessels in addition we can see spindle shaped spaces we can see in the slide these spindle shaped spaces are called as a cholesterol clefts actually it is a cholesterol material during processing making the slide that time this cholesterol will get washed off and the spaces occupied by them will be seen as a spindle shaped areas so we call it as a cholesterol clefts okay originally in the patient it is a uh, cholesterol crystal microscopically it is called as a cholesterol cleft because the cholesterol material will be washed out why this cholesterol is coming here during the inflammation what happens means the blood vessels will become leaky the endothelial cells will be altered so the blood vessels will become leaky so the cholesterol from the blood vessel will come out second thing is and the dead rbcs and lymphocytes from their cell membrane also releases the cholesterol content so that will accumulate in the connective tissue now when this cholesterol supposed to be present inside the blood vessel and supposed to be seen in the cell membrane when it come out and get collected in the connective tissue it evokes a foreign body reaction so what happens means macrophages will come and try to engulf them uh, macrophages that has engulfed the fatty material is called as the foam cells okay there is cytoplasm appears foamy so we use the word foam cells and suppose one macrophage not able to engulf means multiple macrophages join together to form a giant cell that try to clear the cholesterol when the cholesterol is not cleared by these uh, macrophages they will slowly penetrate the epithelium reaches the lumen so the lumen will have cholesterol material so during the clinical examination when you aspirate the cystic fluid from the patient lesion we can see the cholesterol crystals by naked eye also okay it appears somewhat uh, glistening we use the word shimmering crystals glistening appearance okay cholesterol crystals can be aspirated from the lumen of the cystic fluid so from the connective tissue wall it will seep through the epithelium into the lumen so that can be aspirated during the clinical examination that will give a clue when you are able to see cholesterol crystals by aspiration uh, we can say the patient may be having a radicular cyst so it's a diagnostic importance now the reason for western bodies this slide shows a person who discovered it okay they say it is a Uh, some abnormal keratin or it is a material secreted by the epithelium itself similar to enamel they are saying or it may be some uh, hematogenous origin that is it is derived from the rbc they are saying so various concepts are there regarding the origin of this uh, uh, western bodies but the recent one says it is the that epithelium itself secretes this but what type of material is said to be identified okay it's a secretion of the epithelium that is the recent one they are saying uh, many times you can see this in the uh, epithelium of the radicular cyst now a radicular cyst can be two types one is a base cyst the other one is a true radicular cyst base cyst means uh, the radicular cyst will be in continuation with the Uh, pulpal tissue that pulpal tissue is of course died so for example when you remove the uh, tooth the uh, sometimes the radicular cyst will be attached to the uh, root and it will be in continuation with the pulp tissue dead pulp tissue that time it is called as a base cyst actually uh, true radicular cyst means uh, it will be uh, somewhat in a separate from the uh, root portion 
actually okay it should not be in continuation with the uh, root it will be appears to be separated so that is called as a true radical cyst when the radical cyst is in communication with the pulpal tissue dead pulpal tissue that we call it as a base cyst i hope this audio visual presentation um, might be helpful for you in understanding the pathogenesis and the microscopic finding of radicular cyst thank you have a nice day